Mr. Thomas. Big hello, big wave. Here we are with chapter 12, lesson number one, Kacos X minus alpha. In this chapter, the wave function. Now, first of all, before we go into lesson one, first of all, let's think about waves. Woo! So waves is always the part of the higher course that I think relates the most to real life. If you think about the applications of waves and where they are used, well, some quick examples, they're used in laser technologies. They can be used then for medical diagnostics and treatment therapies or research. They can be used for blood tests or laser eye therapy or cancer treatments. They're used for security in the likes of airports and they're used by the military for radar or LIDAR. They can be used for communication. If you're watching this video, you're probably using some kind of fiber optic broadband. Again, waves are used there. They're even used when designing things like concert halls to get the acoustics right or designing musical instruments. You also need to consider waves when building bridges so resonance doesn't cause problems. And basically your list goes on and on and on and waves are all around us. Bringing it right up to date, they're even used for sensors and driverless cars. And a lot of the time, these waves will be a lot more complicated than just y equals sine x or y equals cos x, and often can be a combination of the two. For example, here, this blue line is y equals cos x, the red is y equals sine x, and this black line that we get is what you get if you do sine x plus cos x. So if you add the two waves together, you will end up with this. When a function is formed by adding a sine function to a cosine function, for example, if you add another one, y equals 2 cos x plus 3 sine x, well, the result can then be expressed as a related sine or cosine function. So if you have a cos x plus b sine x, so this is written in terms of sine and cos, but you could go on and write it just in terms of cos. And it can be written as k cos x plus or minus alpha, or you could write it just in terms of sine, with k sine x plus or minus alpha. The values of a and b are going to be constants, so you could have 7 cos x minus 3 sine x. The value of k is your amplitude, and alpha is your phase angle. So how do you write a sine and cosine function in terms of just sine or cos? Well, if you look here, you're writing it as k cos x plus or minus alpha, or sine x plus or minus alpha, and that should ring some bells. In the last chapter, we were looking at the addition formulae, and that part there, the cos x plus or minus alpha, or sine x plus or minus alpha, you can expand and write as that. Let's do it in a worked example then. So example one, write four cos x plus three sine x in the form k cos x minus alpha. For alpha to be between zero and 360 degrees. So the first thing you want to do is if you're wanting to write it in this form here, we'll just set both parts equal to each other. So four cos x plus three sine x equals k cos x minus alpha. From there, well, you know this right-hand side, forgetting the k, if you've just got cos x minus alpha, you know you can expand that using the addition formula. So putting k outside the brackets, expand k cos x minus alpha, so that becomes cos cos plus sine sine. And from there, well, we do have the k as well, and we're multiplying by k, which means you're multiplying the cos x cos alpha by k and you're also multiplying the sine x, sine alpha, by k. So doing that then, uh, you will end up with this. What we need to do next though, is we need to find these values of k cos alpha and k sine alpha. So to do that, what you want to think about are your coefficients. So taking the coefficient of cos x, so how many cos x's do we have on this right hand side? Well, if you think about it, the coefficient is really what you're multiplying cos x by. And we're multiplying cos x by k cos alpha. But because these sides are both equal, well, the coefficient of cos x on the right has to be the same as the coefficient of cos x on the left. So the number of cos x's on the left-hand side is obviously 4. So you know then that k cos alpha must be equal to 4. Doing the exact same thing with sine x, well, looking at sine x, 
So the coefficient of sine x here, we're multiplying it by k sine alpha. And we're multiplying sine x on this side by 3. And again, the coefficients, because both sides are equal, the coefficients must be equal. Which means then that k sine alpha must be equal to 3. You'll notice here as well that I have named the k cos alpha as a and k sine alpha as b. And really, in general, a is always going to be equal to k cos alpha and b is always going to be equal to k sine alpha. What we need to do, though, is we need to find these values of k and alpha. So I'll work through that and it'll be quite long in this example and then I'll cut it down in the next few examples. But so far, we've got k cos alpha and k sine alpha. And we need to find the values of k and alpha. So to do that, well, if you think about it, if you ignore the a and the b just now and we just take the k cos alpha and the k sine alpha, what we could do is we could square them and add them together. And if we do that, well, that would be equal to a squared plus b squared. So squaring them and adding them will give us that. If you square k cos alpha, well, we're squaring the k and we're also squaring the cos alpha. So we'll end up with k squared and cos squared alpha. Doing the same thing with k sine alpha, well, we're squaring the k and we're also squaring sine alpha. So we'll end up with sine squared alpha and the k squared. And that's still equal to a squared plus b squared. From there, well, you could take out k squared as a common factor. So we have k squared brackets cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. And what is cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha always, always, always equal to? One! Brilliant. So you can replace that with one, which means then we've got cos uh, k squared times one. Or in other words, k squared just on its own. That's still equal to a squared plus b squared. The point in doing this is to find the value of k. So how could we get down to k? Square root. Perfect. Square root both sides. So we know then that k is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. That is where that comes from. You do not need to write that out every single time. Once you find a and b, what you can do is you can say, right, well then k is the square root of, and it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case here, it's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. Work that out, and it was the square root of 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So for this example, k is going to be equal to 5. And that is the formula that you, you would use for all of these questions. So we have now found the value of k. Woo! So we need to then go and find the value of alpha. So how do we do that? Well, again, think back to what we just found. We found k cos alpha and k sine alpha. If you divide them then, so if you divide these, let's get rid of that. If you divide them, you will end up with k cos alpha, sine alpha, divided by k cos alpha. That will then be b divided by a. And if you think about it, well, the k's would cancel out. So k in the top, k in the bottom, and it will leave us with sine alpha over cos alpha. And you all know, sine over cos is tan. So tan alpha is going to be b over a. Just remember, sine is always on top, cos is always on the bottom. Or, as Lewis Kidd said way back in 2016, it's a sin to put cos on top. Find some way to remember that so you don't get them mixed up. We know then, putting in the numbers, that k sine alpha over k cos alpha is going to be equal to b over a, so it's equal to 3 over 4. In other words, tan alpha is equal to 3 quarters. But we need to find alpha, so how do we find it? Well, then you would use tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 4. Put that into the calculator and you get 36.9 degrees. However, what we then need to do is you need to think about the quadrants. So we had sine alpha, we had cos alpha, and we've also got tan alpha. And we then need to think about cast. So doing that, we need to think, right, well, sine alpha was 3, that's a positive number, and sine is positive here and here. Cos was equal to a 4, which is a positive number, and cos is positive here and here. And triple check, so tan is equal to 3 over 4, so tan is a positive, and tan is positive here and here. 
And what we then do is we want to take the quadrant that has three ticks. That will be A, that will be our calculator answer, which means then that alpha is equal to 36.9 degrees. From there, you can say that for cos x plus 3 sin x, writing it in that form, that was just the question. Well, we have now found the value of k, that was in the last slide, that was equal to 5, and you had cos x minus, and the value of alpha was 36.9 degrees, so you can put that in there. And obviously from this page as well, we came up with that other formula. Let's try another example. So example two, write cos x minus 3 sin x in the form k cos x minus alpha. Again, alpha is going to be between zero and 360 degrees. So the first thing you do, you follow these steps for every single one of these questions. You set them equal. So first of all, cos x minus 3 sin x. If you're writing it in that form, k cos x minus alpha, you're set equal to k cos x minus alpha. You're best putting in a coefficient here. The coefficient of cos x is going to be equal to 1, which is why I'm putting that in there. From there, take the right-hand side, ignoring k, it's going to be k times this cos x minus alpha, and you can expand cos x minus alpha using your addition formula. From there, you're going to multiply by k, so it's k times the cos x cos alpha, and it's also k times the sin x sin alpha. So we've basically got the addition formula, but there's going to be a k in front of each part. From there, once again, we need to find k cos alpha and k sine alpha. Remember, these are the values of a and b. So going for cos x, let's just take the coefficient of cos x here. Coefficient of cos x, we're multiplying it by k cos alpha. So we've got our k cos alpha. That will then be equal to then the coefficient of cos x on the left-hand side and the coefficient of cos x. Make sure you don't write zero. Remember, there is really one cos x, so which is why I'm writing in the one. So the coefficient is 1, so k cos alpha is equal to 1. Do the same thing with sin x. So the coefficient of sin x here is equal to k sin alpha, and we want to find out what that is equal to. So take the left-hand side, and the coefficient of sin x here is negative 3. So we know k sin, k sin alpha must be equal to negative 3. So that is as found k cos alpha and k sin alpha. In other words, the values of a and b. Going over the page then. So we've got these values of a and b, but we need to find now find k and alpha. So to do that, well, first of all, to get the value of k, that's dead easy. That's just the square root of a squared plus b squared. And this is really what you need to write out. The first example, which is me going through it, through it showing you where it all comes from, but this is just everything that you need to write. So k is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Subbing in these values then, you'd have the square root of 1 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is the square root of 1 add 9, which is the square root of 10. Don't write it as a decimal, just leave it as an exact value. So we found the value of k, we now need to find the value of alpha. And remember, if you do k sine alpha over k cos alpha, well that's equal to tan alpha, and that gives us b over a. And then from there, we can find alpha. So doing that then, k sine alpha over k cos alpha is going to be equal to negative 3 divided by 1. Remember the k's will cancel and sine over cos is equal to tan. So we know tan alpha is equal to negative 3 over 1, which is negative 3. Let's find the acute angle. So ignoring the negative, work out tan to the minus 1 of 3. And that will give us 71.6 degrees. What we need to do next though is we need to check which quadrant we are using. So, you need to think about each uh, of the trig terms. So we've got our cos alpha, and cos is a positive, and cos is positive here and here. Sine was a negative, so we're not using the two, it's positive. Sine was a negative in T and C. And take tan as well, don't use the tan to the minus one, make sure you use one that says tan alpha. Tan alpha was equal to a negative, so tan is positive here and here, and it's negative in S and C. You will always find there is one with three ticks. If there is not, you have made a mistake. So from there, you can say then that alpha is going to be equal to 360 degrees minus that calculator answer, the acute angle. So it's 360 minus 71.6, which gives us 288.4 
degrees. And remember, Lewis Kidd said, it's a sin to put cos on top. From there, the question was to write cos x minus 3 sine x in the form k cos x minus alpha. We have now found the value of k, that was root 10, and we had cos x minus alpha, and alpha turned out to be 288.4 degrees. So we can sub that in there. Anybody that's really geeky? Well, you could also add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees to any of the angles, and you still have the same result. So that function there could also be written as root 10 cos x plus 71.6, except we were asked to write it in the form k cos x minus alpha, so you would leave it as that. You wouldn't start adding 360, or that would be wrong. Example 3. Write root 3 cos x minus sine x in the form k cos x minus alpha, with alpha between 0 and 2 pi. Ooh, so we have radians. So the first thing you want to do with any of these questions, first of all, is set them equal. So root 3 cos x minus sine x equals k cos x minus alpha. From there, you're wanting to expand that right-hand side. So cos x minus alpha becomes cos x cos alpha plus sine x sine alpha. Leave the k just as it is and put the rest in brackets. From there, deal with the brackets by multiplying them out. So we're multiplying k by the cos x cos alpha and the k sine x sine alpha. After that, you're wanting to then look at the coefficients of cos x and sin x. So the coefficient of cos x here, well, we've got a k cos alpha, and the coefficient of cos x here, we've got a root 3. Because both sides are equal, the coefficients must be equal. So k cos alpha must be equal to root 3. Take then the coefficient of sin x, and the coefficient of sine x here, what are we multiplying it by? Well, we're multiplying it by k sine alpha. Do the same here, take the coefficient of sine x, and really we've got minus 1 sine x. So you know then that k sine alpha must be equal to negative 1. So we've found the values of a and b. Using them then, we can then go on and find k and alpha. So remember, k is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Subbing in these values then for a and b, we'll end up with the square root of root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared, which becomes the square root of 3 add 1, which is root 4, which is 2. So we found the value of k. To work out alpha, well remember, you have to write it down as k sine alpha over k cos alpha. The k's would cancel out, leaving you with tan alpha. And from tan alpha, you can then work out alpha. So working that out then, k sine alpha is negative 1, so we've got negative 1 over k cos alpha is root 3. k's cancel, sine over cos is equal to tan, so we end up with negative 1 over root 3. And ignoring the negative, let's work out the acute angle. So tan to the minus 1 of 1 over root 3, well that is one of your exact values. Think about the triangle, and you end up with pi over 6, 30 degrees. From there, we need to think about the quadrant. So which quadrant are we using this time? Well, let's look at cos first of all. So cos is a positive, and we know cos is a positive here and here. And we know sine is a negative, where is sine, is in, where is sine a negative? Well, sine is positive in A and S, and it's a negative in T and C. Triple check that. Tan, remember it's not tan to the minus one, it's the tan alpha. Tan alpha is a negative. It's a negative. Woo! So tan is a negative in S and C. Again, look for the one with three ticks. If there's not three ticks, you have made a mistake. Therefore, alpha is going to be equal to 360 degrees minus, or because we're using radians, it will be 2 pi minus, and it's 2 pi minus pi over 6. You may wish to write 2 pi in terms of sixths. So that will be 12 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which gives us 11 pi over 6. The question, write that in that form. And we know then that root 3 cos x minus sin x is going to be equal to, well, the value of k was 2. So that's going to be 2 times cos. And we've got x minus, and that works out to be 11 pi over 6. And that will be your answer. Try these questions. They're all going to be writing in the form k cos x minus alpha. The next lesson, we will look at the other forms. But try these, master these, before you move on. Good luck. Any problems, let me know. Plenty of questions here for you to try.